Hello everyone, I'm Patrick Rosario, Review Panel Chair of the Best Corporate Governance Award. From initial screening to shortlisting of potential awardee, we look at around 500 annual reports and a similar numbers of sustainability report to try to identify those listed company and public sectors organizations that really embrace the values and importance of good governance and sustainability practices. In this and the next episode, we'll discuss some of the key criteria users to assess the candidate in our Best Corporate Governance Award. Among the assessment criteria, two areas to which we attach considerable weight are board structures and functioning, and risk management and internal controls. In the first sessions, we will discuss a number of criteria relating to board structure and functioning. A reasonable numbers of independent non-executive director should be appointed to the board and the role and contribution should be properly disclosed. They help monitor management, provide an independent reviews of management performance, and play a pivoted role in addressing any conflict that may arise around the board. In particular, where there are controlling shareholders on the board, independent non-executive director should help to ensure that the interests of minority shareholders are taken fully into account. They can also bring diversity onto the board so we look carefully at board compositions and the contribution made by independent non-executive directors. However, if a proposed independent non-executive directors will be holding his or her seventh or more listed company directorships, the board should explain properly in its report why it is believed that the candidate would still be able to devote sufficient time to board matters. Similarly, an explanation should also be provided in the case of the candidate standing for elections who has served at the board for more than nine years. He or she may not be deemed it as independent after an extended services. A company should provide sufficient explanations for specific appointments and resignations of directors, including appointments of family members to the board and clear information on the process and criteria for selections and appointments of directors including executive directors and independent non-executive directors. Shareholders would have good reason to be concerned if they cast a vote for a director who subsequently resigned it without adequate explanations. We also look to see whether an organization has put in place a process to evaluate board performance to assess whether the board as a whole is operating effectively and individuals on are fulfilling their expected roles. In this regard, relevant information including how the evaluation process was planned it and designed it, who led the process, the scope of evaluations, feedback received from participants, whether an independent evaluator was engaged it, and how the evaluation result was made known and followed it up. Here is an example from one of our most frequent awardees. It first illustrates how an independent consultant was selected and the approach adopted towards a board review exercise, followed by an explanation of how the review process was conducted and whether recommendations from the consultants were adopted. Thanks for watching. The next episode will look at some key criteria under risk management and internal control.